If you use external drives for sample libraries or sound content for virtual instruments, etc., then you do not want to use XFAT as the format for your external drives. And the reason is pretty simple. You know, XFAT is dramatically slower at loading sample content into something like Contact, for example. And XFAT is also more prone to corruption since there is no journaling. And this is also backed up on the Native Instruments website. So do not use XFAT for your sample libraries. Instead, use NTFS for Windows or APFS for Mac. Now, I do understand that if you use both Mac and Windows, that XFAT makes it much easier to use a single drive on both systems. You know, as someone who uses both Mac and PC, that is really, really great. But the reality is the performance hit that you're going to experience whenever you use XFAT with your sample content, you know, it, the hit simply isn't worth it. And you're going to be much better served by simply purchasing two external drives and formatting them for each platform. Then maybe purchase a third and keep it as XFAT for some simple file transfers. Of course, you can also use, you know, the cloud for that. Now, the external drives that I like and the ones that I use are the Samsung T7 Shield SSDs. They have a really good price to size ratio. They have great transfer speeds. They are USB 3.2 Gen 2 compatible, and they are NVMe drives. They come pre-formatted as XFAT, and there is some software included that you don't really need. Now, the easiest way to format these if you're on Windows is to just right-click the drive and choose Format. Choose NTFS if you're on Windows. Leave allocation size alone. Give the drive a name. Quick format should be selected by default. And start. Of course, keep in mind that whenever you format a disk, it's going to erase all data on that drive. So be sure to back up any data before doing this. Now, in our case, you know, we have a brand new drive here and there's nothing on it anyway, except for the Samsung software that I, you know, that I don't want. So click OK. The format is done. And now if we check, the drive is NTFS and ready to use on Windows. However, if you want to change the drive path, and by that I mean you want to change the letter from the default that has been assigned to it, then you should do that before installing your sample libraries. Otherwise, you're going to end up breaking the path and you're going to have to reconnect it. So I don't like D for this, and I'm going to change it. Right click the Windows button, choose Disk Management, Select the drive, and we want the D drive. Then right click and select change drive letter and paths. I'll select change, use the drop down and select a different letter. I think I'll go with uh, X for this one. Okay, now you're gonna get a warning about changing paths. Click yes, and that's it. Now our drive has a different letter. So that's going to be the path that I choose in native access for all of those contact libraries to install to. That's gonna be the path I'll use in Waves Central for the sample library content or for IK Multimedia, et cetera, et cetera. Now on Mac, as long as you have the finder selected, you can click go, head to utilities, open the disk utility, select the drive, and then you can erase it and reformat. All right, so once your external drive is formatted for Mac or PC, you're going to notice a huge increase in speed when loading your libraries versus using XFAT. So once again, if you're going to use external drives for your sample libraries, instead of using XFAT, which most drives are pre-formatted with XFAT these days, you're going to be much better off using NTFS if you're on Windows or APFS if you're on Mac.